It's time for Change My Mind, the power of persuasion, the most persuasive show on ETV. Here's your host, Lena Myway. Welcome to Change My Mind. We have a great show tonight with exciting guests, great clips and picks, all designed to persuade. We don't want to waste any time, so let's get started by getting right to a famous appeal to emotion. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? A single scene, three simple phrases, one powerful message. It goes to show you that you don't need a lot of words or fancy editing to get your audience to respond to an appeal to emotion. That's when you use language or images that are emotionally charged. Appeals to emotion can be based on fear, on feelings of family insecurity, on an emotional need to be attractive, even on the very human need to be just a little bit better than everyone else. In the Brain on Drugs commercial, do you think the producer's appeal to emotion works? They had one message to get across. Taking illegal drugs will fry your brain, just like a hot pan fries an egg. The emotion this spot appeals to is simple fear. It's like those scared straight programs designed to make juvies think twice about a lifetime of crime. Let's welcome Dr. Phyllis to the show. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be here, Lena. What do you think about the Brain on Drugs spot? They were trying to appeal to fear. It was a blatant attempt to show a worst case scenario. That's the problem and the success in using emotional appeals. These appeals don't rely on logic. You're grabbing people at the emotional level and stirring them up through sympathy, fear, pride, or vanity. Now this approach can be very effective and you might want to use it yourself in your writing. There's nothing wrong with an emotional appeal but remember, you're manipulating or being manipulated. Thanks again, Dr. Phyllis. We'll be right back. <laughs> Who can ever forget the images of people from New Orleans trying to escape the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina? For weeks, the news provided nearly round-the-clock coverage of the devastation including emotional appeals for direct assistance for the victims. Let's look back. Good job in handling one of the most atrocious and embarrassing and far-reaching and calamitous things that has come along uh, in this country in my lifetime. I'm 62. I don't remember, I remember the riots in Watts. I remember uh, the earthquake in San Francisco. I remember a lot of things. I have never, ever seen anything as badly bungled and poorly handled as this situation in New Orleans. No, we must the water for these people. Why can't sandwiches be dropped to, the, to those people that are in that Superdome down there? I mean, what is going on? This is Thursday. Those were some powerful images, weren't they? They made me think about how lucky I was to live so far from the hurricane zone. What about you? Did those news images appeal to your emotions? Did they encourage you to act? Did you think about getting your classmates to donate canned food, blankets, water, other useful items? And what recurring themes coming through the reports seem to be designed to appeal to your emotions? And which emotions did they touch? Sometimes visual images, like photos or video, can go hand in hand with words to increase appeals to emotion. Think about it. Has a photo ever helped you to change your mind? Civil War photographer Matthew Brady brought the horror of war to the front page of the local newspaper with his graphic battlefield photographs. Since then, images like these have provoked people to take stands they might not have thought about. Let's meet award-winning photojournalist Fred Stopp and see how visuals can add even more impact to emotional appeals. Hey Fred, what do you think? Well, when I'm taking a photo, I want to make an impact. It's got to be something that's going to get people's attention. I want to tell a story. I like to go for very graphic kinds of compositions or just a tight shot of a face. Those are the kinds of things that catch someone's eye and make them stop and think about what they are seeing. There's no doubt they will show the emotional nature of the situation. What about those Matthew Brady pictures? How did they appeal to emotion? Well, before newspapers started to use photos, all the reader had to go on was the reporter's description of events. 
adding photos to the stories made it a lot harder to glamorize war and gave shocking impact to the reporter's words. The words were just the dry facts, but it was the carefully chosen pictures that engaged people's emotions. I don't think Matthew Brady could have imagined the impact of his war photos. Today, you can't pick up a newspaper or a magazine without seeing photos that help tell the story. The emotional impact of those pictures can change your readers' opinions. And if you aren't aware of the power of pictures, you can be influenced to change your mind. So, as you write something designed to appeal to emotion, think about adding a photograph or a video clip for a little more impact. Fred Stock, ladies and gentlemen, stay with us. Sometimes the spoken word is the most powerful appeal to emotion. There are two or three speeches per century, strong enough to move mountains. Lincoln's Gettysburg Address appealed to the emotion of horror. The picture his words painted was one of blood-soaked ground. It forced the listeners to acknowledge and honor the sacrifice. We cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it, far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note, nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. John F. Kennedy's inaugural address appealed to a sense of patriotism. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And Martin Luther King Jr.'s most famous speech, which appealed to everyone's desire for equality. Just as I have a dream, that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. One day, down in Alabama, with its vicious racist, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, yeah. one day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. Powerful, emotional words with nation-changing results. Whether using powerful news images, shocking photos, or poignant words in a speech, persuasion is more powerful when the photographer or writer appeals to emotion. That's it for this edition of Change My Mind. I'm Lena Myway. <laughs>